guys, welcome back to Simply Fajika, a place for budding and aspiring entrepreneurs. Guys, I'm so excited to be in front of you for another week, but I'm also excited because I've got a couple of announcements for you. So before we get started with the announcements, I do want to welcome you to another week at the channel. If you are new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If it doesn't trouble you and you like the content that I'm presenting you, do not forget to like this video, share it with others who may enjoy the content, and then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I release new content. Now guys, guess what today is? It is February 1st and you already guessed it, I have opened registration for my courses. So guys, do not forget, March 4th, I am starting my next home care licensing course. So you can register with the link that's provided below. And then at the end of March, on the last Saturday of March, I will be conducting a masterclass. A lot of you are reaching out to me. You already have your license, but you're really not quite sure how to attract your clients. You're not quite sure how to operate your home care agency. So I have created a masterclass for you. And you guessed it, it's called How to Stand Up and Operate Your Home Care Agency. Both registration links will be in the, in the video description. Guys, you don't want to miss this stuff. Remember, seats are limited because I want to make sure I can give you 100% of my attention. And so I make sure that those class sizes are kind of small just to ensure that I can give you guys that service that you deserve. With that, we're going to transition to today's topic. So guys, I have done this video before, but I thought I should drop in really quickly to remind everyone because not everybody wants to operate out of an office. So a lot of you are asking me, can you operate from home? So guys, before I answer that question, let's talk about some of the options you have to operate your home care agency. Now guys, the first one is completely easy, which is just for you to have an office. Now guys, this is if you have that extra cash laying around, maybe you have another business you have multiple businesses and you truly do need an office space okay so these are people it's really not convenient to operate from home for a variety of reasons and you would prefer to keep your home life and your professional life separate if that is you then you want to start investing some time into discovering what type of office environment are you looking for that's in terms of city because remember, by now you should have already identified your service area. So you want to have an office near that service area. Not because clients are going to be coming to your home. So remember, your, your office, you're not going to have a lot of client traffic, right? Because even when you're doing visits, typically when you're onboarding them, when you're selling your program or selling your agency to them, you're doing that from the client's home. So the only time really you'll have people coming into your office is if the state wants to audit you, number one. And number two, your employees may need to come to your office, depending on how you do your hiring process. Some people don't have direct deposit. Maybe they need to, they need to pick up a check, things of that nature. So if this sounds like you, then the obvious choice is for you to actually have an office space. The second choice that I want to discuss with you is having a virtual office. Now, I will tell you this, um, having the virtual office isn't going to be a long-term solution. And I will tell you why. By the time the state wants to come audit you, you know, they're going to be wanting to looking, they want to come and look at your particular office space. When you have a virtual office, you don't have that. You do have a specific mailing address that will not change, and you do have a place where you can come and meet if you need to. So those needs are met. But remember, whenever you have a virtual office, if you are electing to come into the office, you're typically reserving an office space for that day. Now, I will tell you, that's what I initially had. I initially had a virtual office arrangement I had that for a few months because at that time I was just having my office to house hiring events. If writing my policies and procedures, sometimes I needed that time away from the home, wanted to make sure I had quiet so I could have a nice quiet space to work, right? And make sure that I was kind of dedicating myself to standing up my business. So it met my needs. However, when it was time for me to actually submit for licensing, I needed to make sure that I was stagnant. 
because I needed to make sure I had a place to house my client files, my employee files, things of that nature. So you want to make sure that when you do have that virtual office, if you transition into an actual office, what does that mean for your contract? So let's say you signed a two year lease for a virtual office and then you upgrade to having an actual office. Do you get credit for the six months that you are already virtual office? These are some of the conversations and some of the questions that you want to have with your leasing management. Okay. So those are the types of things you want to do. You want to make sure that at some point, if you are a virtual, if you decide to start off virtually, at some point you're going to transition into you actually having an office space. Guys, the third and final selection that I have for you or choice that I have for you is to operate from home. So that's the biggest question I get. Can I operate my home care agency from home? Yes, you absolutely can. Now, when I called the state to ask this question, they made one thing very clear to me. You want to make sure that the space that you are using for an office is just that. So in other words, an auditor is not going to come in and find a whole bunch of toys all over the room. The auditor is not going to come in and look like, wow, this just looks like a spare bedroom, right? Because at this time, because you're deciding to use this space as an office, that means your employee files need to be made sure that they're confidential and that only people working in the agency, and really that should only be a select few, have access to those files. If you have a room that people are running in and out of, it doubles as a day room, it doubles as a toy room, well then you're not really giving your files a confidentiality and you're not limiting access as you should. So that's the only caveat that I have for you is you have to make sure that that office space is truly reserved for you to operate your home care agency. Okay guys, I hope I answered your question. I also wanted to give you a little bit of background in terms of you know, what other options do you have? What else is out there? I have seen people do such things as, you know, because, you know, I will say this. I know that the, you know, the rent is not cheap on some of these places and sometimes people are finding homes or finding condos and just kind of like doubling that up as their office spaces. I see people getting really creative you just want to make sure whatever you decide, it's really focused on you operating your home care agency. Okay, guys, I hope that was, again, a value add for you. Guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I release new content. That's all I have for you guys. Stay blessed.